define velocity. Okay, so velocity is how quickly your displacement is changing, also known as rate of change of displacement. Personally, I will recommend you write rate of change of displacement. Alternatively, the mouse scheme also mentions that you can also say change in displacement over time. Sure, but I personally prefer the first one because it's a bit more mathematically accurate. And once in a while, the mouse scheme is very strict. They want to see you mention the rate. So, I don't know. Up to you. So, let's look at the question. A constant driving force of 2,400x on the car of a mass. Car accelerates from rest. Assume that there's no resistive forces. Calculate the acceleration of the car. So all the force questions, my only tip for you is to just draw a free body diagram. So what's the object? The car. What's the forces on the object? Uh, driving force? Yeah. So we draw a driving force, 2,400 Newton. Okay, and this car is moving lah, at some speed, getting faster and faster. It's going to be some acceleration due to the 2400. So we go Newton's second law. Okay, force, mass, acceleration means we got to go Newton's second law. So F equals MA. 2400, how heavy? 1200, and acceleration. So here we get 2. Now don't be so happy and write 2 here because. There's a chance you may lose some points. You need to remember to put final answers in two significant figures. So, 2SF. At least. Okay? So, remember the point zero. If you forgot the point zero. So, one mark for a final answer. Okay. Here's where it gets a bit challenging. So, on the graph, sketch, uh, on, sketch a graph showing the variation of the velocity of the car for the first 20 seconds of its motion. So we are starting from rest, yeah, up here, the question says from rest all the way up there. So whatever velocity I draw here, I need to start from the zero velocity, which is all the way at the bottom down here. Then if acceleration is constant, 2.0, it should be a straight line. Something like that. Ooh, that's not really a straight line, but you know, straight line. But don't just simply straight line anywhere, we straight line though. It's good to know that after 20 seconds, what should be the velocity? Let's do a quick calculation to double check. Since this is a two mark question, so we probably should do proper values. Huh? Okay, so I know, I know my graph is going to start at 0, 0. I need to find the final velocity. So after 20 seconds, acceleration is change in velocity over time interval. So this acceleration is 2, I don't know, the V. We start off at rest, so no initial speed. And we take 20 seconds to get faster and faster. Okay, so this should be 40 uh, meters per second. Means as I get faster and faster, by 20 seconds, I should be at 40. So I'm going to plot an X there. Small little X right here. Okay, so... On your paper, you try to draw a straight line. I will attempt. But this one note kind of does some weird stuff sometimes. Okay, okay, almost there, almost there, almost there, almost there. Uh -huh. And we got it. Okay, perfect. So this is our graph A. Oh, mass label, ah. Huh? Sometimes you don't label, you might lose a point as well. So this is A. Next, graph. Oh, wait. How many marks is this? Two marks. So one mark comes if you have a straight line from the origin. So straight line, origin. Another mark comes from where did your graph end? So the graph ends at the point uh, 20 seconds later, you are at 40 meters per second. So yeah, start and end. Next. In reality, expectation versus reality. A resistive force due to air resistance acts on the car. This resistive force increases with speed. 
until it becomes equal in magnitude to the driving force at time t12. So there's a very important sentence here. Something happens at 12 seconds. What is it? Uh, equal in magnitude to driving force. So let's go back to our car diagram. Uh. Where was it just now? Uh, yes, this one. Okay. So let's, let me draw the story for you. Uh. The car starts off like this with some force. Okay, now we have to include air resistance. 2400. Zero, zero. Then there will be this resistive force that is slowly increasing as the car gets faster and faster. So increasing with speed. So the car is moving to the right. Until eventually, many seconds later, you reach a point where the forward 2400 driving force is exactly the same as the resistive force 2400. <gasps> Does this mean the car stopped moving? No, no, no. Car is still moving. But this speed is now constant. Also known as terminal velocity because the force cancel out. There is no more acceleration. So here, no acceleration. Whereas just now, you have acceleration, getting faster. So your speed is increasing. Okay, how do we plot this? So the key word is at 12, something happens, we reach terminal velocity. So I should draw a straight line at 12, wherever it is. Lah. Now before that though, it cannot be a straight line anymore. It has to be a curve. So I'm going to try, attempt to draw the best I can. So you should have a curve. Ah, curve. And then once you hit 12, the gradient should be 0, no more acceleration, so constant speed. So you try to draw a straight line best you can here. So here is where you have constant terminal velocity. Can't go any faster because there is no acceleration. Because the forces cancel out. Okay. So this is your graph B. I think they want us to label it, right? Label this line B. Okay, yes. Please label the line B. So let's go B. So how to check if your graph is correct according to the mark scheme? Firstly, I need a line from origin. So beneath, okay. So this line from origin, because you start from rest, has to be below your other graph A. So this, this graph A is here. Whatever you draw should be below. Huh? Doesn't matter how low or how high. As long as it's below. Secondly, oh this is, sorry, this is B1 mark. Independent mark. Then your gradient have to slowly decrease until zero. So that means, you see here, eventually the graph become flat. Here is where the gradient is zero. So the gradient, which is acceleration, is zero. Last mark. Uh, the graph should be horizontal. Okay, horizontal here means constant speed. Huh? 12 seconds onwards. So at T12 onwards. The nice thing is we don't need to know exactly what is the terminal speed. Yeah, so we don't have enough information to calculate that also. So we just, they're happy, whatever value it is. If you draw it uh, like I did, or if you drew it a little lower here, or if you drew it a little higher here, it's okay. We don't know the value. Okay, so as long as you satisfy these three criteria, you get the three marks for drawing a graph. Okay, let's go on to the next part. So that's sketching. Okay, now we got to explain. Okay, let's go. So at time t20, you change something else. The driving force is increased to 3,000 and then remains constant. Describe how the velocity of the car changes due to this increase in driving force. Oh, okay. Let's... So just now, we already have a story, right? Your car is getting faster and faster. Then you reach terminal velocity. 2,400, 2,400. Let's continue the story. What if, I'm gonna copy and paste this 
So I'm lazy to redraw. <laughs> so, okay, here's a story. This was at uh, 12 seconds. Let me label that. T12. Okay, T20. Our driver decides to make things a little interesting. So here, we got 3,000 Newton. Oh my goodness, I think I need more space. 3,000. And we are still having a 2,400 resistive force. Okay, now you see the force is not balanced, right? This forward force is much bigger than the backwards force. Means there's going to be some acceleration happening here. So forward acceleration. Acceleration. Which means whatever speed you have will be increasing again. Because there is acceleration in the same direction as speed. Okay, so we're getting faster. It's T20. But eventually though, as you get faster, this resistive force also get bigger. Hmm. So after some time, you also reach terminal velocity where you have 3000 Newton. And this resistive force has gotten bigger to also 3000 Newton. And now your acceleration is zero. There is no more net force. This one cancel out this one. So whatever velocity you have, yeah, you're moving to the right, but now it's going to be constant. Right. So we can say that, you want to describe, tell a story. What's the story? How the velocity changes. So we say at first it is constant, then 20 seconds it increases. So we say velocity will increase. Due to acceleration. Due to acceleration. Because now we have a big driving force, 3,000. But it will eventually become constant. So it's increase until it reaches a new or higher terminal velocity. Terminal velocity that is constant the side note to yourself this is constant no more acceleration that's this diagram on the right so if you can draw this diagram and tell a story based on the diagram and draw a graph that would be great help you understand kinematics okay so if you mentioned increase that's a mark uh, increase until you reach another terminal velocity or constant velocity or another speed you can check the mask scheme for different ways of saying this uh, except if you use the word speed then that's the other second mark so you know for fun if you were to extend the graph of this story from t20 onwards <laughs> how would it look like huh? let's go back to this one here okay so your graph increase increase flat you're probably gonna go up and then kind of hit another terminal velocity like that. It's a very weird graph. But if you ever have to draw it, you should know how to explain why the graph looks like that. Okay? But yeah, I think that's all for this terminal velocity question. Pretty good one. Explain, calculate, draw graph.